Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about my import sorter uh, and how I made it five times faster, <laughs> which is pretty significant. Uh, and I'm going to show you the tooling that I used. Uh, this is very similar to a lot of my other performance videos. So strap in if, <laughs> if you haven't seen those before. Anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so uh, to get a little context here, I wrote, and almost a decade ago now, uh, an import sorter for Python called Reorder Python Imports. Yeah, naming is not my strong suit. <laughs> it does what it says on the tin. Uh, basically, it's a little bit different than iSort in that it tries to be a little bit more focused on static analysis, and it has a very particular uh, import style that tries to avoid merge conflicts. Uh, it's compatible with Black and all the other tools, uh, or most of the other tools that I know of. Uh, so anyway, that's Reorder Python Imports. And on stream, I was adding a feature to it. Specifically, I was having it learn how to rewrite deprecated collections imports. Uh, it knows how to do a bunch of other deprecated imports already. I just forgot about this one for some reason. And while I was adding this, I noticed that there was a bit of code that I was like, this feels like it's probably slow. Uh, specifically, the import removal or replacement code. I was like, this can't be fast. Uh, so I started profiling it and try, starting to figure out, oh yeah, this code actually is pretty slow. And so let's let's see if we can do some things to make it a little bit faster. Uh, so I started by profiling, picking kind of a representative application that I'm using Reorder Python imports in already to poke at this. And for that, I use pre-commit. It has a decent number of files, a de decent number of imports. And so I felt like it was a, uh, a good project to kind of profile the work that I was doing here. Now we're going to set up a virtual environment and we're going to pip install the old version of Reader Python imports before I fix this. Uh, 3.1.0, I believe, is right before I started refactoring. Uh, actually, yeah, I think 3.1.0 will be, will be old enough. And the first thing that I want to do is kind of get an idea of just how slow this was. Uh, I have this little utility that I wrote called best of. <laughs> it's just a little dev script that I have in my home directory. Scratch Python best of. Basically, all it does is some very, uh, very rudimentary performance analysis. It runs a subprocess and times how long it takes and runs it however many times until it gets an answer. <laughs> I have a different theme from, from stream. Whoops. Uh, so if we do best of and then reorder Python imports, uh, pre-commit currently is in Python 3.7 plus mode. Uh, this mode actually and we'll find later that this mode is actually most of the reason that it was slow. And last time I tried to pro profile this, I wasn't profiling with this option on, so I didn't notice that it was slow. And if we run this with all of our files, get ls files, star.py, see, yeah, oh, yeah, get those dots out of the way. By default, it does 10. Uh, as you can see, the fastest one here was 572 milliseconds, which is kind of slow. Uh, if I remove this Py37+, plus, which is how I was profiling it before, you'll see that it's significantly faster. Uh, it's you know, 400 milliseconds versus 500 milliseconds. So something tells me that this option probably does something a little bit inefficient, but there's probably other stuff that we can improve as well. And yeah, I promised a 5x improvement. We'll get this down quite a bit more by the end of this. So once I kind of had an idea that there's some slow stuff and I kind of had an idea where some of, the, some of the slow stuff was, I decided to jump at it with a profiler. Now, I actually wrote this other script down here, uh, which is going to make our profile a little bit easier to read. Basically, the problem with cprofile out of the box is it'll profile imports at the same time, and we don't really care about the startup. We mostly care about the execution time here. So I wrote a little thing to, and, and yeah, the startup is important. So like if we look at uh, best of, oops, best of Python 3-C import reorder, Python imports. The, the startup is important here. So I do want this to be fast as well. So we got to not regress that at the same time. So, uh, you know, 36 milliseconds of this is startup time. So the bulk of it is execution time, but I also don't care about profiling this because the C profile, the, the, the graph will be a lot harder to read and it'll, you know, point out, point out stuff I don't care about. So we're going to try and eliminate that. And I did that with this little profile script. Basically what it does is it takes a uh, console entry point as the first argument and then runs just the console entry point while profiling. So it ignores the import and loading parts of this. And so for that, python3 prof.py, reorder python imports, py37 plus, all of our python files again. And this will give us a good profile of what we're looking at. 
Uh, we're also going to use our gprof2 dot. We're going to use the same profiling tools that we were using before. gprof2 dot. I can spell. <laughs> gprof2 dot. Uh, it generates out the same pstats file. Where's the pstats file? Uh, where is the pstats file? Oh, out.pstats. Look for log.pstats. Prof to dot out dot pstats dot t s v g out dot s v g and then if we open that up we can start seeing some of this slow stuff that's going on here and this is kind of the same profiling graphing stuff that we were looking at before so this is the the overall graph and we're going to zoom in on particular parts in here and show you some of the improvements that I made here so the first thing that I notice is yeah we we kind of expect this this is our entry point and it's going to call fix file contents 116 times because there's 116 python files in pre-commit and there are a bunch of steps in the reordering and uh, you'll notice here that apply import sorting is taking about 32 percent of the time uh, the remove imports is taking about 25 percent of the time and we're not actually removing any imports no 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 changes happened here this this is kind of telling me that there's something inefficient with removing imports. Um, we're basically looking at the ones that are colored differently. Partition source. Ooh, we're trying to split apart the Python source. This is pretty slow. And it does a few things that are slow as well. So I know tokenizing is slow, and there's probably not much that I can do about this. I kind of expected tokenizing to be about 50% of the execution. Uh, and it's only 7% right now. So we're doing a lot of extra work that we probably don't need. I also noticed that we're running AST parsing. That's kind of expensive. We might be able to clean that up later. Uh, and we're doing basically a bunch of slow stuff. So I basically took each thing one at a time and tried to fix those. The first thing that I decided to target was this import removal. Uh, and if we look at the code for that, at that particular revision, uh, github.com re reorder Python imports. Check out v3.1.0. Uh, and if we look at remove imports, you'll notice here that uh, it does a loop over each of the existing imports. That's kind of expected. We kind of need to do that. Uh, oh, yeah. And we're also <laughs> we're also importing over every existing import as well, or every every import we're trying to delete. So even if it's not removing any imports, it's going to do this every single file, which is a lot of work. And so the first thing that I did was, this is the same for every file. Let's just hoist that out of here and not have to redo that. So that was kind of the first patch that I approached here. Pre-compute all of our import removals instead of trying to constantly recreate those values. Basically take that little bit of slow code, uh, generate keys for this little removal. So instead of having a loop over strings, we loop over a set of keys. And now this becomes linear instead of n squared. So after that, we're able to fix up this function. Uh, and I basically went down all of the different uh, slow parts of this and managed to factor each of them out one at a time. So the first one was, you know, removing imports. Um, I also noticed <laughs> that we're spending a significant amount of time in actual sorting. Now the sorting shouldn't be complicated. It should basically just be figure out what type of import the import is and then put it in the right place. It really shouldn't be taking a huge amount of time, but almost all the time is spent in classifying imports. And we ran this you know, 11, 1100 times. That's the number of imports that are in pre -commit. Now, the first thing that I noticed is that most of the imports come from a small number of modules. So it's possible to cache just those small number of modules and then not have to uh, continually recompute these. Uh, basically, if you see an import for pre-commit, it's always gonna be classified the same as if you import pre-commit in another place. So you only need to figure that out once. The first thing that I did was cache this function. Now, unfortunately, in order to cache this function, I actually needed to rewrite this, this code here because it came from a third-party library. Now, I maintain the third-party library and this library, so I was, was kind of able to, to manage that. Um, but I basically renamed my old library into a new library. That way, I could make a breaking change without having to adjust all of the APIs. They can all continue to use the old package name and not worry about my big breaking change. And I basically renamed the library and did a breaking change at the same time. That way it's not a breaking change for anyone. And in the new version of this library, 
uh, I basically rewrote from scratch, but I kept in mind this caching idea. I was like, oh, <laughs> this is slow, and we repeat this over and over and over. Let's try and uh, optimize the library around caching this particular chunk of data. Now, the actual patch for you know, rewriting this is, is significant, so we're not going to go over it. Uh, but the core of it is there's a uh, LRU cache in here that is basically the old class, the old import classification code, but now it can get cached rather than uh, <laughs> rather than needing to continually run over and over and over. I also reordered some of the code in here to make it more efficient. Uh, this was always happening at the top of the file, even though there's some constant import names that we can quickly eliminate before anything else, uh, which made that easier to handle. And I could probably you know, optimize this a little bit further with a dictionary, but didn't show up on the profiler, so I'm not going to bother. <laughs> uh, but basically, I had to rewrite this library, renamed it, did a breaking change so that I could eliminate that slow part. So that's kind of the next thing that I did there. Uh, yeah, this is the rewrite of the library to use the new library. It was largely compatible with the old code, so I was basically able to just you know, take the old code and uh, slot it into where it was before. You'll notice that this function that I wrote to make uh, removals faster, I was able to eliminate because the new the new library has that functionality built in and basically just moved all that over. Uh, then I started doing similar to what I did for the removals. I wanted to pre-compute for this replacements over here. Uh, so I, I pre-computed that. I basically did a bunch of changes like that. I'm not going to go through all of them, uh, but there were about 15 of them. Uh, pre-computing, caching, uh, some, some attributes that were looked up a bunch of times. I actually found some dead code that was slow for no reason, so I was able to get rid of the dead code. Um, I skipped AST parsing. We talked about that earlier. We're already tokenizing, so why do we need to AST parse at the same time? Uh, I was able to remove a surprising function. <laughs> I was very surprised that this function was a significant percentage of the performance, but it was about 15 to 20% of the performance was spent computing the lengths of lines. Turns out I didn't need that at all. Uh, I could just use the line numbers rather than actually knowing how long the lines are. That made this a bunch faster. Um, there were some calls to this function to rejoin the source together, which weren't actually used. So I got, got rid of those. This was all dead code. <laughs> uh, spe uh, specialized handling of empty files so they don't need to do a bunch of work when they don't exist. Uh, this is the one behavior change. This was another function that was very, very expensive, which is computing the most common line ending in a file. I changed it to just use the first line ending, which should be about the same, but uh, this function is surprisingly uh, surprisingly slow for whatever reason. Uh, and then I did some small, small combinings. But after all of that, if we install the latest version, pip install reorder python imports upgrade, and we run that same best of command as before, that one, not that one, this one. You'll see that it's now 115 milliseconds instead of, what was it, 550, 5, 570 before? So it's about a 5x improvement. Slightly, slightly better than 5x in this case. Uh, and that was, you know, <laughs> that, was, that was after doing all of that. Uh, but basically, that's, that's how I approach things. Basically, take a, take a profile, uh, fix one thing, profile it again, fix one thing, profile it again and slowly chip away at the slowest parts and improve them at the end. Oh, I did want to show you what the profile looks like afterwards, so you can see that there are still opportunities to improve this further. Uh, gprof to dogs out to... Yeah, that's why I opened this in a second tab, is because it uh, spews some console stuff there I don't really want to look at. Uh, so you'll see after I've improved things, we're still, you know, Partition source is now our most expensive thing, and there's not really too much that I can do here. The tokenized module, uh, there is eventually going to be a C version of it that'll be faster, but yeah, I can't, I can't really do too much about that. So I can basically ignore this 43% of execution because there's not too much I can do there. Uh, and most of the rest of this is now, you know, blue colored. There is still, the sorting is still somewhat expensive, and there are a few easy low hanging fruit that I can fix here. For instance, it spends a bunch of time in hashing enums. I can improve 4% there just by you know, refactoring to not use enums, or you know, I can uh, do some other stuff to prevent it from calling 
Uh, where is the part where I could do even more? Yeah, calling hash a bunch of times like this. This can get improved. There's there's some small things that can be made better, but overall it made a huge difference just by chipping away at a few common slow functions. But anyway, hopefully you found this useful uh, or interesting or something like that. <laughs> if you have additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.